So I'm going to try to uh, answer a question that was sent. And um, I'm going to start putting these up on YouTube, like the things that I do go through. And they were asking me about the difference between a uh, filter for a kind of camera look compared to adding it to a animation project. And if I wasn't clear before, those are two uh, different things. One, um, how do I, just, I guess, okay. so let's go here. Well, can't look at that. So if you have this, this program here and uh, it's called uh, Wondershare. It has effects. So once you create your your video, then you can add a uh, effect to it, like a visual effect, um, like like a black and white effect, a red eye effect. They have a millions of them, millions of them, and that's one type of effect that's not what I was talking about in the animation side of what I was doing so what I was talking about is adding it to the animation not through the effect of the video effect but actually the animation so if you're drawing something it's different from actually filming a real movie right so if I, I guess you could do it now because they have so many different filters and things like that. But think about it in that context where if you're filming something, you would most likely have to have the effect added to it because you're not drawing real people by hand. It's different from animation. So with animation, and I was using this particular one for, um, it was going to be a scene where he's reminiscing about something when he was uh, a child. Um, so I don't want it to look colorful, right? I, w I want to give it a look of, oh, old timiness or, hey, this was in the past, right? So if I'm contrasting these two things where this is a color scene, you know, as vivid as possible, I still got to work on this, uh, for his drafting and stuff. So this is real rough, but this color here right without having to tell your audience hey i'm going to the past right you can add the filter on because you're doing everything by hand and all it takes is uh well i use inkscape but you can use whatever you like whatever filter you add you know it's it's not really um most people already know this but, I, but the person i think they were might have been a little bit younger but once I draw these scenes out and I'm putting it into the animation in, you know, Moho, I don't, the only thing I have to do is create this, right? Just this one thing and, ex and, and um, export it out. And when I go here, I could just lay it on top. I guess I can do that real quick here. Let's do a real. It's not going to be the same as in Inkscape because you have a lot more control when I'm in an Inkscape. So I usually will create it, that filter, whatever I like it to be. You can do it in here, but it, I'm just used to doing it the way that I've been doing it. Right? So we're blocking the whole scene out. So here you will go here, right? And you just do what you would regularly do. You have these, you know opacities and things like that at blur gives a different effect right so that's a, a white overlay so it's not the same thing as like if you were filming something because we have the ability to control every frame of animation and luckily like that where I don't know what movie did I recently see where there would be like they do a transition a lot of movies and, and shows do it where when they're transitioning to either show something in the past or or sometimes they'll do this kind of fall kind of thing where 
it's supposed to be something maybe in the future whatever effect that is they have to do that um through the actual mechanics of the video right i don't maybe someone's done it where they i guess you could do it because now every form of video you can add whatever you like but there's a difference in doing that and what it would what it makes it look like when you're doing um an animation so let me go back so let's go back here so for the the person was answering asking that question so this is my filter that I'm going to use for uh, telling something that happened in the past right I don't really use crayon that much as far as a filter cover but I wanted to have more of a pencil-y feel to it than uh, what I call like a, a clean version right so I want it to look like it's done in pencil not you know colored like this is and again I have to clean this up so people that know me don't mess with me <laughs> please so what I do is I use this technique right it's not the same and then the audience when he looks at it there should be uh, something playing in the mind oh this is a transition from something else right we're not on another planet we're not um you know we're maybe we're it's a jail scene something like that right so watch the difference between because this right here looks like oh, this is patchy it doesn't look right when you put a filter over it like so you see the transition of the actual animation those blends that you're looking at that didn't look blended once you put this cover over it it gives the feel of oh maybe this is a different time right without me having to say hey he's thinking about um uh, when he was a kid or whatever right so if he's at the fireplace right he's at the fireplace he just turned this dude here in the stone because he thought he was going to be an easy victim and he's just chilling at the fireplace right and the character his head may oh okay he's cooking so of course we all cook right but the emotion that's going to play on the character is once he looks down at the fire and then I take you out of this colored scene into a more pencilated scene like this that's going to be the transition and tell you okay what's going on and if the audience is engaged enough with the character this they'll understand when I do this that this is either something in the past or something he's reminiscing about right so when I take you back out of that back to here that's how it breaks right that's how that scene breaks back to oh okay because someone's he, he, uh, he's happy now because he thinks that you know uh, like this troll type of guy thought he was gonna attack him basically should I be telling this <laughs> I don't care it, so you can understand what I'm what, what, where my head is at right so this dude was gonna go attack him he's in the forest right he, he's actually searching for something that he needs it's not a quest but I don't want to go give that away right so the actual villain or the troll villain in this thinks that he is weak as far as a character right he doesn't know the landscape doesn't know the area so he tries to attack him turns out bad for him that he does know the area he was raised here and he knows all about this planet right so he's going to be at here right so what am I trying to do I want to get I want to first I want the element of oh this guy maybe knew about this place this guy try to attack him thinking that maybe he didn't know where he was or what planet this is and then he ends up uh, beating him right by understanding the landscape and what that the, 
the different things on the planet and, and what's going on. I'm not going to go into more detail. Just give it away, right? Once I get this to the point where it's just a defeated foe, right? Then he's cooking dinner. And you don't even think of, there's usually no emotion played. Usually in the mind state of the person watching, it's like, okay, if they like the character, they're happy that this happened, right? They're happy that the, the, the mean thing didn't get him. Right. Hopefully, if you if I should, well, the beginning, if I show and give you enough emotion about that character at the beginning, you're worried about him. You're hoping that he doesn't get destroyed. You hope he doesn't get eaten. If I've had you attached to the character at the beginning, it's kind of hard to do, but that's what I'm, I'm trying to do. So once we get to the point where, oh, OK, he seems to know about this planet, he knows what he's doing. Right. He's cooking. Cooking's basic thing doesn't really mean anything. But when I do the transition from once he goes down and, and his he's gazing into the fire, I can transition into this, and then it'll give the audience a little back uh, understanding of oh okay, he comes from this place, right? And whatever thing I'm gonna go, I'm not gonna give that away because that would be crazy, right? But he he he's familiar with this place, right? And those are what I mean when I, uh, the person was asking me transition like on the screen. A lot of it, it doesn't matter because you can change a night scene into whatever you want it to be. Um, you know, usually when you're, and I say this a lot, whenever I see a cooking scene, I'm more in, in, in involved in it if it's at night for some reason. I, I think that's just me, right? Cooking scenes to me are always cool at night in the woods because there are vulnerability there you're by yourself right you feel i wouldn't say fear but you you, you your wits are about you you're you're <laughs> you're paying attention more to your surroundings than if it was a daytime and it's birds are singing and, and the sun's out and animals are, you know what i mean so but that's what i mean by that so the so uh no this is not a transition that you would put on the actual video you probably could but I don't uh, need to do it that way when I can just use this and what I would do is I would you know once I get this uh, character built out meaning I gotta chop them up and put all the bones and everything in there and the eyes and all that right I'm going to have this filter I'll just keep it so anytime I need to go to the past about this particular individual I just do that all right and the blending looks a little like pencil blending it's just because of the uh how you do the filters because all of this stuff comes off there's a little bit of red here this i over exaggerated some of it because of what i was doing right but um all of these things come off uh so like so and on blending again have your do whatever you like have your own style don't be afraid for a lot because trust me everyone has their own style some people may look at this and be like oh i don't like the way it looks but again i always go back to this it's always going to be about the story there's so many different like short clips that you see where the drawing isn't uh, uh doesn't really matter i think there's a short clip about a um, two parents that lost a child. If you're trying to learn about how to draw an, uh, someone into um, a character or, or a short clip, you can pay attention to that one. I can't remember what it was. I think it's on Net, uh, Netflix. But it's, it's basically about uh, two parents that lost their child. And uh, I do believe it was a school uh, shooting and you know it's kind of bad but if you want to understand about style and drawing if you look at that drawing it's not really anything anime style where oh look at the like look, look how great they it's nothing like that it's all about the emotion so whatever style you have whatever you're doing and, you know my advice would be stick to that because more than likely it's going to be different from everyone else's even if you just take 
cues from other things and I don't I don't mind that it's a lot of people are very sensitive about what's going on in animation like I get it there are people out there are the best artists and they should be greatly rewarded for it also on that there's a lot of people that can tell stories and they can't really draw all right we do have the ability to have those two things work together and that's what I always want or I strive to see more of a oh let's get together and do something rather than how dare you look similar to this thing and it's all of that stuff I don't think it's, it works when you're trying to build something because there's so many different things out there that are uh, stopping artists and a lot of it is not other people it's that imagination a lot of it's going to be like hey we don't need them anymore and from some of the people that I, I speak to that's their worry because once that happens where there's no they can come in and just be like hey uh, draw this scene and this character and da 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 right and I get it you can AI does help with backgrounds which I love and if you do end up drawing something it helps as well because you can put it in and then it can duplicate it or change it wherever you like but I think more artists should start to um, form something where they can protect themselves the same way that any other industry would protect themselves because for a very long time the artist is probably I would say the last one to I don't know get benefits for the story there's so many things about people they kind of tell me these things is like they they're kind of pushing fear into your head where it's like hey be careful doing this you know don't give them everything uh you know your story's good but don't do this and like i don't that's not the way i think i, I don't have an assumption that everyone is going to be um negative i'll just say it like that i don't think that way you know until someone shows me that then i i can you know put them in that box but i really don't like thinking that way and a lot of that's kind of played on my mind the last couple of days because of um some of the things that uh, a friend of mine was you know artist is doing and things like that but the only thing that could have um you know help all this is people kind of forming something together so that you're not as vulnerable as they think because uh, when you have other people with you either you know can help or at least it can make you feel better that you're not the only one uh, in that boat um, that's a rant sorry about that but uh, yeah so filter the person that was asking me about the filter um, it's not a, uh, a camera filter it's just just one little box you know like so and I don't know let's go red little blur that's all it is and I just put it on top just like so and I export the vector into uh, moho on top of everything and that's it and whenever I want that 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 visualization that style to go away I just pull it past where you can't see all right um so i am trying to get everything on the the youtube now which is a lot <laughs> cutting stuff putting pictures like um, all of that stuff with the images and everything like that uh, it's a lot of work i do respect these youtube people because uh, oh another thing hey you got to do a uh, try to do a video every day when you talk to the YouTube um, the, guy, the YouTube guys because I was like hey how does how do, is there any way to, to do this the right way yeah um, they just want you to put out a lot so I'm working on that I'll try to do like maybe a short one every day see if I can do that even if it's like five or seven minutes uh, in between work 
uh, a lot of times I'm talking to you uh, I'm trying to get all of this stuff organized to get some kind of assistance with some things so it's hard but I will do my best for um, people that have the questions about why I use Moho over everything else I'm going to probably do that one uh, Inkscape why do I uh, love Inkscape so much it's 100 million things I can say about that uh, and then the people that keep asking me why are you using paint to draw everything I think I answered that one but I will put that video out as well but yes all the other questions I will try to um, when you ask me questions now I will try to just put it uh, in YouTube where everyone can see it uh, instead of just sending it to you directly and I think that uh, someone they, they said, oh, that may be helpful for other people so um, I will be doing that the, the problem with that is uh, sometimes when I'm talking about one thing I switch subjects or go into other things so I'm trying to uh, not do that as much and the other thing not say um as much as well so I'll be working on those whenever I put more YouTube stuff out um, but again if you have any questions I don't care what it is where you are in the country which is great because we can communicate um, the, the, the email uh, so it's N I I I A T R E C at gmail.com again that is n i i i a t r e c at gmail.com uh florida some uh that was the other thing uh florida Fl so i from florida to houston and back so um yeah but florida now all right Thank you for uh, watching. I hope this helps you with the filter. Um, again, when you go into um, when you go into these, try different ones out. I do. Uh, blue really gives a certain kind of feel to it as well. Um, you know, blue and red is the ones I really like. Uh, I'm trying to figure out a, a way to incorporate like this orange type of filter um, because I'll, I'll use a little bit of blur and then you know I'll go here where you can kind of change the angles of where it is uh, I do use this um, for like the fire scene so which is cool so let's just say you're, this did I do this already okay I did yeah so like fire you know how we're um, it's at, at night and then the person is looking into the fire and it's like kind of glowing um, that's what I use that for as well and I use it for covering up to where if I, I think this looks too bright because uh, this might be midday right I want to make it look darker I use um, just basic filters for that and I change them based on you know the feeling of it um, there it, you can use moho but for some reason it to me and, and I may be wrong it doesn't look the way I like it to look so what I'll do is I would export the, the PNG or the SVG into moho as, as a filter and um, it might just be me but I think it looks different all right thank you very much for paying attention speed you can ignore the rant those parts you could just speed up and I'm trying to start putting timestamps in where you could ignore that and uh, happy what's today <laughs> uh, oh happy Friday 23rd